Severe weather wreaks havoc across the island. Heavy rains forecast for the next 24 hours in the Ratnapura, Kegol, Kalutara, Gol and Mathura districts. Over 600 people affected by gale force winds in Pular Narwa. Eyewitness to Valikada prison killings targeted in shooting incident. Wild elephants encroach on human habitats in the northwestern province. Caribbean and southern United States brace for Hurricane Nyama. Bringing you the latest news from around the world and here at home, I'm Sandra Ferdinando. And I'm Bandi Jai Singh. A very good evening to you. Our top story tonight is a weather situation across the island. So we go directly to Krishan Dev Sagayam in the News First Weather Center. Well, the weather situation over the past 12 to 24 hours has changed drastically across many parts of the island with the western and southern provinces of Sri Lanka specifically receiving heavy rainfall. Now, as you can see in this satellite imagery provided by the Met Department, Sri Lanka is barely visible due to the heavy cloud car that is being experienced by the island at present. Uh, we can see this humongous cloud cover moving from the east towards the west and this amount of clouds and rain has already passed but much, much more rain is yet to come over the next 24 hours, according to the Met Department, with rainfalls exceeding 100 to 150 millimeters. Now, we learned and we reported at News First last night that severe gale force winds that blew across Kadruela, Polan Narwa damaged dozens of houses in the area. And today, a team from the News First Sirasa Shakti TV1 Sahanayatra visited this area less than 24 hours since the disaster to provide much needed relief to the people of Kadurela Polanarwa. Now for a situation update on the area, we cross over to Azra San. Over 600 people were affected. Around 237 homes in several areas close to the Kandurela town were damaged in the strong winds which swept across the area last evening. All the metal sheets from the other side blew onto our roof. Trees and lamp posts have uprooted. All the power lines are on the ground. My shop was damaged in the winds. All the jack trees on the other side collapsed. Everything happened in a matter of 10 minutes in an unbelievable manner. It suddenly started raining. When the rain started to gradually increase, sudden gush of wind started to blow. It was almost like a tornado, which took all the houses with it. Our wall collapsed as well. Just moments after the incident, a Sirasa Shakti TV1 Sahanayatra team left for Polonaro last night to provide relief to those affected. The team reached its destination this morning. The Civil Security Force and the Minaria Police also provided their assistance in handing out relief to those affected. This is a great service. We thank the Sirasa media for putting this into action as fast as possible. We thank the Sirasa media for helping us. 
The city of Colombo received heavy rainfall this afternoon causing drainage systems to overflow and flooding several low-lying areas. Several areas in Colombo including Braybrook Place, Ward Place, Slave Island, Castle Street and Town Hall were flooded this afternoon. The past couple of months many areas of Sri Lanka experienced a severe drought with reservoirs going dry and farmlands getting destroyed. However, in the past 12 hours here Colombo has experienced heavy rain. We, we are currently standing in uh, the area of Peta in Colombo and it's around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and this area has experienced heavy rain from morning. Now, on our way here, we saw many areas in Colombo that are up to waist deep in water and speaking to people of this area, they say that a lack of proper drainage system is the cause that inundates the city of Colombo inundates the country's capital within a short shot here's an update on the weather situation in other parts of the island the gold district which has been receiving heavy rainfall since early this morning flooded several areas including badegama nelwa dimbada and kurupanava Our correspondent said several roads in the Badegama area in Unanvita in Gaul were flooded. The Gaul District Disaster Management Center said the Gaul District received the highest rainfall over the past 12 hours which mostly affected the Bembada and Yatalamatta areas in the Nagoda Divisional Secretariat. This afternoon as a result of the heavy rains the irrigation department took measures to broaden the mouth of the Ginganga Floodings were also reported along the Vakvella road Abdul Wahab Mawata and Pettigalavatta road in Gaul Our correspondent said the heavy showers were accompanied by strong winds The Mathura district received heavy rainfall as well. According to our correspondent, the Kamburuva, Valgama and Hitteti areas in Mathura received heavy rains accompanied by strong winds. Our correspondents say the western slopes of the central hills have been receiving intermittent rains today. The sluice gates of the Castle Ray and Mausakale reservoirs were opened as a result. Our correspondents reported that heavy rains were also experienced in Kantale today. Heavy rains in Alutgama and Kalutara this morning caused several roads in the Darga town to flood. Now as I mentioned earlier even though many parts of the island experienced heavy rain over the past 24 hours there is yet much more rain predicted 
to come over the next 24 hours as well by the Met Department. Now, this is the weather forecast issued by the Met Department for the next 24 hours. The Department of Meteorology predicts heavy showers between 100 mm to 150 mm in the western, southern, central and Sabragamwa provinces, particularly in the districts of Gaul, Mathura, Ratnapura and Kaluthara. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, southern, Sabragamwa and central provinces as well. The Med Department says that there may be temporary localized strong winds during thunder showers and advises the general public to take adequate precautions to minimize the damage caused by lightning. Well, we here at the News First Weather Centre will be constantly monitoring the developments of this extreme weather and we will be definitely keeping you updated. Well, that's it from here for the moment. It's back to the studio. Thank you, Krishan. Well, as Sri Lanka faces the impact of the torrential rain, Hurricane Irma is barreling towards the Caribbean and the southern United States. Now, earlier today, Irma was upgraded to a powerful Category 5 storm. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said the hurricane had sustained winds of up to 220 kilometers per hour and was likely to strengthen in the next 48 hours. Hurricane advisories were issued for territories that dot the West Indies, including parts of the Leeward Islands, the British and U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, in preparation for the intensifying storm that could pummel the area with life-threatening wind, storm surges and torrential rain by today evening. Irma, now packing 130 miles an hour, also threatens the U.S. East Coast and Florida, which last evening declared a state of emergency. The Hurricane Center expects Irma to reach southern Florida on Saturday. It comes as residents in Texas and Louisiana are reeling from the effects of Hurricane Harvey, which struck as a Category 4 storm causing heavy rain and destroying thousands of homes. The U.S. National Hurricane Center cautions that it was too early to forecast the storm's exact path or what effects it might have on the United States, but warned of likely effects to hit some areas by later this week. News First has confirmation from a reliable source that Arjun Aloysius had prior information on treasury bond deals and auctions. Zuvik Farzan reports on Bondgate. According to the source close to the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, the Attorney General's Department has now found proof that Arjun Aloysius had inside confidential and price-sensitive information on which bidding, purchasing and selling decisions were made on treasury bond deals. The calls are between Arjun Aloysius and the Chief Executive Officer of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Kasun Palisena. The source reveals that the whole truth behind the Treasury bond deals were discovered after listening to the original telephone conversations which were previously deleted by Perpetual Treasuries Limited. Yesterday, the Chief Dealer of PTL, Nuan Salgado testified the CEO, Kasun Palisena, instructed him to identify telephone conversations that are harmful to PTL and delete them. Salgado had complied and passed on the respective phone calls to the senior IT executive of PTL, Sachit Devatantri, to be deleted from the system. In addition, Perpetual Treasuries had tampered with the telephone conversation recording system installed by Metropolitan Communications Private Limited. However, the senior IT executive at PTL has backed up the calls onto CDs and the originals were handed over to the Commission on Friday by the chief dealer of PTL. The startling discovery of inside information was made by examining these CDs. The evidence will be produced before the Commission tomorrow to confront CEO of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Kasun Palisena. This is a massive breakthrough for the Attorney General's Department and the Criminal Investigations Department in its investigations to assist the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. It is now known that the leading counsel for PTL, President's Counsel Nihal Fernando, will no longer be appearing for PTL as his client concealed vital information from him. News First will have all the latest developments tomorrow in the prime time news at 9. As the bond gate continues to reveal ever more damning information, we take a look at the extraordinary presidential gazette appointing the three-member commission to inquire into the issuance of treasury bonds and key events that could correspond to these points laid out in the gazette. In the gazette, 
point G charges the Commission to investigate and inquire into whether proper procedures and adequate safeguards have been adopted to ensure that the said matter referred to in the said schedule hereto resulted in obtaining the optimum price or benefit for the government. I insisted on a public auction. Auditor General Garmini Vijay Singh testified before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka had gone for a 30-year bond to raise funds at a time when there were other least cost methods available. Garmini Vijay Singh in his report notes the total estimated losses from both the auctions on the 27th of February 2015 and 29th of March 2016 was 1.674 billion rupees. It was revealed by several witnesses from the central bank that former governor Arjuna Mahendran had visited the public debt department twice on the day of the auction and instructed at first to accept all bids and then to accept 10 billion in bids as opposed to the 1 billion on offer. This had never happened before. Point H notes whether any inquiry or probe into any of the aforesaid matter referred to the schedule hereto had been obstructed to prevent in any manner resulting in damage or detriment to the government or any statutory body including the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and, if so, the person or persons responsible for such obstruction. Now in this instance, I think that uh, communication didn't work properly. We should have uh, said we needed to uh, raise 10 billion, but of course we had advertised it the previous day and I only got to know of the treasury requirement on the Thursday. So there was this communication. I, I accept that. Arjun Aloysius, who is a person of interest in the bond scam, refused to give the password to his iCloud account to detectives on a number of occasions. The Presidential Commission issued summons twice on former Finance Minister Ravi Karunanayake to appear before the Commission. Point J. Whether there has been misuse or abuse of power, influence, interference, fraud, malpractices, nepotism or any act or omission connected with corrupt activity in relation to the said matter referred to in the said schedule hereto. Whistleblowers provided evidence before the Presidential Commission relating to the wrongdoing and criminal conduct of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Kasun Palisena and Arjun Aloysius on the basis of important phone conversations being deleted from the PTL system. Arjuna Mahindran's lawyer produced an undated letter from former Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayake seeking a fund requirement of 75 billion rupees for road development projects. Ravi Karunanayake said Mahendran requested him to send a letter relating to what happened at the February 26-2015 meeting between the three ministers and thereby he had sent the letter in May 2016. Evidence before the Commission revealed the rent for the Monarch Residency apartment occupied by the Karunanayake family was paid by a company owned by Arjun Aloysius. In addition, there is a possible case of nepotism between former governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Arjuna Mahendran, and director of PTL, Arjun Aloysius. Shots were fired last night at the family residence of Sudesh Nandimal, the key eyewitness to the Valikata prison shooting incident which killed 27 inmates. Nandimal had lodged complaints of receiving continuous death threats on numerous occasions. Police said the General Secretary of the Committee for Protecting Rights of Prisoners, Sudesh Nandima's sister's residence, where he is staying temporarily, was shot at around 11 last night. We heard a noise while we were upstairs, which sounded like firecrackers. When I looked, there were holes on the main gate. Then I ascertained that these were bullet holes. They are trying to silence me for witnessing the Valikata shooting incident and an attempt to frighten me so I would flee the country. I was transferred to Kandy by a certain official. He is Nilanta Fernando, who is the chief engineer at the railway department. When I asked him why am I being transferred, he replied, so what if prisoners die? And said that I don't deserve to be kept on this earth for trying to send the defense secretary to prison. I believe there is a strong connection with all of this. 
When inquired, police media spokesperson Espiruan Gunasekura said the incident has been investigated with the assistance of CCTV cameras in the vicinity. The criminals behind this are panicking, which is why they are trying out such acts of intimidation. It has been five years since these killings occurred, and the former justice minister completely protected the killers behind this. We asked the current minister of justice to address this matter and think about our safety. These murderers, these dogs who are running about free, must be tied up. This is what we ask of the government. The commission report was handed over to then Justice Minister Vijay Dasar Rajapaksa. He hid this report in his drawer for nearly two years. It took a long time to get this report out of his safe. Somehow, after a copy of the report was publicized, the media in the country exposed the names behind this in detail. Later it was revealed as to how the Justice Minister tried to hide this matter. Constant allegations were leveled against the former defense secretary over this incident. The report says that shots were fired at Gota's list. We call on a fair investigation into this shooting incident and expose the people connected. Minister of Law and Order Sagal Ratnayaka spoke yesterday on the investigation report of the Valakata prison shooting incident. I submitted this report to the Prime Minister. According to the facts in the report, there are several more investigations that need to be carried out. Another statement regarding the post-mortem has to be obtained. I cannot tell you as yet when that will happen. However, we have handed over the report to the Secretary to the Prime Minister to be directed to the Prime Minister himself. In November 2012, unrest broke out at the Valikada prison as its inmates staged a demonstration prompting security units to intervene. 27 inmates were killed in a shooting which broke out during the unrest. Sudesh Nandimal, who was an eyewitness to the incident, has resorted to legal action to seek justice over the incident. On the 3rd of March 2015, Sudesh Nandimal provided a statement to the Criminal Investigations Department. Convening a media briefing on the 9th of January this year, civil organizations called for justice over the Valikata prison shooting. On the 14th of March this year, staging a demonstration opposite the Valikata prison, the Committee for Protecting the Rights of Prisoners said, although it has been five years since the incident occurred, the law has not been implemented as yet. This morning, President Maitri Pala Sirisena inspected the construction of the Lotus Tower and the Defence Headquarters. The Head of State inspected the progress of the project and instructed the officials to consult the relevant parties for any shortcomings in the project. Army Commander Lieutenant General Mahesh Senanayaka and several other senior officials of the Sri Lanka Army were present during the inspection tour. President Maitri Pala Sirisena also inspected the construction work of the Lotus Tower, considered as the tallest building in Sri Lanka. The multifunctional tower with a proposed height of 350 meters will consist of a luxury shopping complex, restaurants and an observation arena. The construction activities of the tower will be completed in March 2018. Binarapoya, which is marked today by Buddhists across the globe, occupies a significant place in the history of Buddha Sasana. It is on this Poya day the Bhikkhuni Sasana was founded. It was on Binarapul Moon Moya that Mahapujapati Gothami, with 500 wives of princes, requested the Blessed One for the third time to be allowed to enter the order. Following the intervention of Ananda Theru, Lord Buddha gave permission to Mahaprajapati Gautami on condition that she would accept the eight great conditions. The other significance of this poya is that it falls during the Vas retreat season of bhikkhus. The Sri Sambuddha Puja took place this morning at the Shakya Malakya, located opposite the head office premises of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited. This deed was supported by two subsidiaries of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited, Harrison's Shipping Private Limited and Jones Carriers Private Limited. Director General Manager Ratnasabhapati Udaya Kumar and staff were among those present. Residents in several areas in northern western province are currently under threat from wild elephants encroaching onto their lands. Residents in the areas of Ahatuava, Atharagalla, Nakolanagay, 
Palu Kadavala and Yadis Sava in Mahava of the Kurunagal district have been facing threats from wild elephants. Area residents report many of their homes and crops are at a high risk of being destroyed. When I woke up around 3.15 in the morning, I saw the elephant. I quickly alerted the neighbours. This has happened three to four times now. This isn't the first. Our children cannot walk on the road safely. And because of that, they can't go to school. We can't even go to the hospital for treatment. We have already requested an electric fence to be put up. The residents further said, the main reason behind the situation is due to the electric fence which has been put up around the Palu Kadavala tank is inactive. We have been facing this situation for several years. Although we complained to the state officials and also helped them to put up the electric fences, it has been of no use. The Agodopitya village in Karulagaswaba in Putlam is another village suffering from the threat of elephants encroaching onto their lands. Area residents say it is a massive challenge to protect their crops from wild elephants. Several state officials holding high portfolios come day in and day out, photograph the elephants and leave. This is entertainment for them. The poor are the ones who are always the victims. These are our crops. These elephants are destroyed. The elephants have eaten around half an acre of our banana farm and have also destroyed our coconut cultivation. All we ask of the government is some form of solution. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa met with a group of Muslims from Kalmune at Carlton residence in Tangor today. Yes, there was a major change. They did it several times and this also will limit to words. So the economic policy does not matter. Their policy is to sell everything. I heard that there are people trying to sell the elephants to foreign countries. Yes, UNP elephants. There are no elephants left there to sell. If you ask these people, they will give you the best example. They were all from the Ampara district in the east. If you were paying attention to what they were saying, you would not ask me that question. And with that, we wrap up Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. And I'm Bandin Jaya Singha. Before we leave you tonight, stay tuned to TV1 for this first in focus. Shahin Jurampati speaks to Nick Henson, expert on food security and food fraud in the UK, revealing alarming information about the way in which food manufacturers tamper with their products. The criminals don't want to be caught, so they will do small, small things. They will add sugar to your fruit juice, they will add water to your milk, and water to your chicken breast, and that way, that will carry on for weeks and months and years, and they will make millions of rupees. They don't want to be famous. If they kill somebody, people will investigate, and then they're famous. So the entire intent is they want to stay under the police notice, making food that is not legal, but not dangerous either.